hi welcome back to uh, this video again uh, I'm going to be continuing from where I left left off in the last video which is um, the required field validator here I'm going to be showing you how to use another property of the required field validator which is to set focus on error um, what this means is that uh, if you have more than um, actually let me show you what I mean if I had another uh, label and I set a text to password this will be the password and um, I drag another text box which is going to be used to get the uh, input from the user so this will be the text box password and um, I need another uh, I need a required field validator there required field validator and remember don't forget to set the error message and um, please enter password and uh, remember always to set the error message and the control to validate we want to control the test box password so um, let me demonstrate how to use the set focus on error which is a property that you find here uh, set focus on error uh, set focus and this one you, you set it to true what this does is um, let me show you when you run a when you run a application it makes sure that um, check this if I should click on s the button you can see that because I set the uh, property of this required feed validator to set focus on error you can see that we have the blinking cursor the blinking mouse which is ready to take the input in this text field so because I did not set it for this field that's why it didn't happen for the username if I set it for the first one as well the f it's always the first one that will receive the input so let me set it for the um, required feed validator for the username for the year for the username so let's set the set focus on error to true here as well so if I should do the same thing here and I click the button without inputting any value into the field the first one received the input so that's that's the uh, function of it uh, you should always make sure that uh, you validate because the bad data can be sent into your database so if you require a user to if you require a user to always input for example if you've watched any of the uh, database video that I did you should see that we on some on some of the database column we set that it should not receive a no value so that means there must be value inserted into that column of the website so um, if the user doesn't enter any value you should then uh, your database is through an error so which means uh, your application will you know behave in a very funny way so you must make sure that you tell your user to input a value that you know that you need for your database to function properly or for your you know data to be complete as well so um, a very very important concept I'm going to show you is how to use the um, server-side uh, validation because I know some of you are thinking how to use a server-side uh, validation and this is where uh, the form begins um, there is a page property called the is is valid profit, uh, property and I'm going to show you how to do it say for example uh, what we've been doing now is um, if I input something in this uh, area we can say that um, uh, the because the JavaScript is actually checking without clicking any button so you see we don't we don't get any error because there's a JavaScript and um, but if I should disable the JavaScript on this website let's do that let's disable the JavaScript and um, in order to make that happen in, in order to make that works first of all let me show you something really quickly if I go to the code behind and say every time I click the button every time I click the button button one dot uh, underscore click I want this to happen I want the button one dot text I want the text 
on the button to change to you clicked me so I want the text on the button to change to you click me so let's run the application and let's try to make that happen so here we go what happened the information did not get sent to the server so the you click me in did not happen now it happens because the information was finally sent to the server right okay so if I should disable the JavaScript let's disable the JavaScript if you don't know how to disable JavaScript on Internet Explorer so just watch closely go to the security tab on your internet uh, click on the custom level and uh, scroll down to where it says sc uh, scripting and disable the uh, active scripting just disable that are you sure you want to change the setting for the zone yes and ok that so now let's run our application again now that we so this time look at what happened now you see even though we didn't enter any information here the you click me was executed because it was sent to the server so I will tell you what happened the there was a uh, trip to the server there was actually a very long <laughs> it's a very long trip to the server the f data was sent to the server and because the data was sent to the server this text was processed the text on the button that displayed was processed also the uh, validation was checked on the server on the server to make to uh, to ensure that it happens and because the server knows that the validation didn't occur so that's why we get this error message back but we have to make a round trip to the server before we get this error message here so because initially when we didn't um, disable the JavaScript this you click me did not occur until we actually send until we actually input a data into this field so uh, in order to prevent that this is what we do we use a property of the page called um, so this is what we do you say if page dot is valid um, then process this I'm going to change the uh, uh, I'm going to change what's going on alright let's do this uh, button one button one dot text equals to data was executed perfectly right if the page is valid otherwise else um, button one the text equals um, say there was validation error so bear with me I'm going to explain what is going on so now let's run the application again using this page is valid method so if we send it to the server now there was a validation error so they now we're using the server to validate if there's an error or not because what happened is the is the page dot is valid method actually generate um, a val a false value because what we say what what it does here in this method what what happens in this method is if page is valid then it's going to return true so that means uh, the server is the server is very happy with the validation because this is valid method is actually telling the server to check if the validation controls are happy with the data that was input into their field so if those um, 
controls are happy then it returns true then we get that the data was executed perfectly but if the validation controls are not happy with the data that was input within them then the, th the return false which is why we see this message so if you don't understand C sharp just know that you can use this to uh, validate your um, the, uh, your form field on a server so uh, let's get back to it uh, let me stop it and try it again okay so here we go if I input data now into this field we get um, data was executed perfectly so even though we've disabled JavaScript every validation that is occurring is not happening on this browser anymore everything is still working fine because right now we can still validate if there's nothing in here now in this field we're going to get an error that was an, a validation error so uh, this is your last form of defense so if you want to make sure that your uh, f uh, your form data your data form or form data whatever is always um, checked before it's populated into the database then use this page dot is valid method if you don't understand please leave me a comment and I'm going to make sure that I explain fully because you know it looks like um, you might not get it so but just follow what I do do what I do not what I say <laughs> I'm just kidding anyway thank you very much